I added a little bit to the link list test. I added four items total to our link list, printed them out, and you can see the initial empty list and then the four items in the list. There is an add method that takes an index and that's what I wanna test. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put coffee into index zero and the line that does that is right here. Probably should go ahead and move that one up and then I'll print a blank line and then print the uh, results. Now I also want to print what I'm doing. So I'm basically doing this and the reason I'm using index and element instead of the number zero and then coffee in quotes, that's called the literal coffee instead of the variable that holds the value coffee. The reason I wanna do uh, create a variable for each of these is because in the print, when I wanna print out what I'm doing, I wanna print out exactly the method that I'm calling, which is list.add, but I want to have the value of index in there Let's see, it auto parentheses, and then comma, and then the value of element, like that. All right, so it should print out list.add, and then the actual index, and the actual element. All right, I'm gonna comment that out first. We're not actually gonna add it in there yet. Well, I'm gonna uncomment that in a minute. Here we go, all right. So I didn't actually add it even though I printed it out. I just wanted to see that it prints out what I wanted, which it exactly prints out this list add right here with the values filled in. All right, so now let's go ahead and call the add method. Now, I haven't really done anything to the add method yet. Whatever the default was is gonna be called and we'll find out what that is in a second or five seconds. Still running. All right, sweet. Here we go. So what in the world is happening? Let's decrease this font so we can read it. Oh, it's a lot of stuff. So what happened? Here's the original output, and then we got this unsupported operand exception. All right, how we read this, you usually wanna read the first line of code under it, and if you wrote that line of code, that's where you should start looking. Sometimes you'll see one or two or three or four methods you didn't write at the top. You wanna to go down the list until you see uh, the code that you wrote. So mylinklist.java is definitely the code I was working on. Mylinklist.java is right here. And if you click on the error, you can see exactly where that, or I should say you click on the exception link, it'll take you exactly to line 87 in the file they're referencing. And right here, this is where it was thrown. And if you look, all the methods that I implemented automatically or that I let NetBeans implement all have this unsupport, unsupported operation exception. It's a different exception than index out of bounds, but we didn't write the code yet, so we probably shouldn't be calling it. And that's why this is put in there by default. So let me go ahead, delete that. Uh, we'll deal with the exceptions in a reasonable way later, but now I want to really just focus on using the method that we just wrote, which is this get node method. All right, so now we're adding at an index. Let's do the index zero case first. So if index is equal to zero, so what's happening here? Now we want a visual of what these nodes look like. So I've printed them out, oatmeal, strawberries, burger, coleslaw. But a better way to think about it is a visual like this. Here's the head. So we have the head is points to the initial node. And I'm using these arrows. These are pointers. And so head points to the oatmeal node, which the data is oatmeal. Now each node has two things. It has data and it has a next, and the next is another node, and I'm representing that with the arrow. So what's the next node after the initial is this strawberry node, and strawberry has a next, and that points to the burger node. Burger has a next, points to the coleslaw node. Coleslaw node has a next, 
but it's not pointing to another node. It's pointing to nothing. And what we call nothing is null. And it's pointing to null. So a lot of times you're going to see uh, an arrow pointing to null in these diagrams, but sometimes you may not even see the word null written there. And just the fact that this arrow just kind of zigzags to nowhere implies that it's pointing to null. So you can write it either way, either the word null, or you can just have it zigzag to nowhere. Either one is fine. Let's think about what adding coffee at position zero would actually look like. Now, you may be wanting to redraw the coffee node over here, but all the nodes, they exist somewhere in memory, but they're not necessarily ordered in memory consecutively, like this diagram would make you think. What actually puts them in order is the arrows right here. So these arrows are super important. And when we add a new node, all we're really doing, we're creating a new node for sure. But what we're really doing after that is re-pointing the arrows at the right things. So let me undo all those highlights. All right. So I want to add coffee initially at index zero. So what will that look like? We definitely need to make a new node because we're adding a new node. We're going to, of course, increment size, but let's focus on these arrows. So how do I actually put coffee before oatmeal? What we're going to do is we're going to take head instead of pointing to oatmeal, we're going to point to coffee. So let's just go ahead and do that in the code. If index equals zero head equals new node with Here's the data right here. So I'm going to rename it element. So we're just going to put element in there and semicolon. So all I did, create a new node and set head to the new node. Uh, let's do size plus plus. All right, this only works if index is zero. If index is not zero, uh, this method won't do any, well, it'll still increment size, but we're only going to call it when index is zero. So let's go over to look at the test code that actually calls it. So I did in fact use index value of zero and I'm gonna add coffee to position zero. So let's run this and see what happens. Take one last look at our add method so far and we're gonna run it now. It shouldn't throw the same exception because uh, we took out that uh, throw unsupported exception. Okay. Eventually, here we go. Hey, coffee's in the list. Perfect success. Except what happened? So let's go back to this diagram. Exactly what I wrote here happened. Head pointed to coffee. We saw coffee show up. However, nothing else was around. Everything else was thrown away. Why did that happen? A good way to think about nodes or to think about just pointers in general is that if nothing's pointing to an object, the object will disappear. And that's called automatic garbage collection. And a good way to think about that is these nodes are like helium balloons. And if you just let go of the string, the helium balloon floats away. Now in real life, I don't know exactly what happens. It floats up, but for our purposes, if nothing is pointing to the object anymore, it'll disappear. And what's pointing to oatmeal now? Nothing's pointing to oatmeal. What used to keep it is no longer pointing there. So how do we fix this problem? What I want to do is have coffee at the front and then oatmeal to be the next element. So how do I do that? Well, I need to create another arrow right here. There's a few ways to do that. I'm going to do it a longer, more complicated way, and then we'll do it a smarter way. So I'm going to call this temp, and it's going to equal head. Now again, over here, I'll have a temp, and it's going to point to head. So let me erase that. When the method starts, we have head pointing to oatmeal. And then what I just created is temp is going to point to oatmeal. So at the moment, two things point to oatmeal. 
This is back in our code here. So all I did so far, temp equals head, and now head is gonna equal that new node. So head no longer is gonna point to oatmeal, head's gonna to point to the new node with coffee in it. How do I create this arrow? Well, that is coffee, the coffee node. How do we refer to the coffee node? It's now head, and the red arrow I just drew is head.next. So next line, head.next equals temp. All right, this should solve our problem. And so all we did right here is build this uh, curved arrow from coffee back to oatmeal. Temp is gonna disappear when the method's over, but if you just think about what's here, when temp goes away, these nodes are not gonna float away anymore because head still points to coffee, coffee still points to oatmeal, and oatmeal still points to the rest. So we're gonna be okay, hopefully. So let's go ahead and run it. Eventually, here we are. We added coffee at position zero. Look at that, it's beautiful. Coffee, oatmeal, strawberries, burger, coleslaw. Okay, so it works at position zero. Let's clean this code up a little bit. We can do all of this in one line. Let's think about how we would do it. So clearly I gotta make a new node, for sure. The node constructor, which we can go look at, navigate, go to source, control shift B. Here's the node constructor I used. There's another node constructor. I think one of these I had to add in, uh, but I did that earlier video. You can add in, when you create a node, you can give it the next right when you create it. So let's go ahead and do that. So where's my add? Alphabetical, there we go. So new node, so I'm not just gonna add the element, I'm gonna add the element and what it should point to. So back here, I'm gonna erase temp. Hopefully that made sense to you what we did earlier. So this is what we have initially, head points to oatmeal. So I'm going to create a new node and I'm gonna make the new node point to where head points and then make head point to the new node. Now the order I did it is really important. You have to do it in the order that I just said, and you can rewind the video and watch it again, but you have to, you have to create this arrow before you remove this one, or else again, oatmeal is gonna disappear. So how do we do that? Well, right here, new node. So this new node, the next has to be head. Now on here, this is, should feel kind of weird because I'm using head and then setting head at the same line of code. Now it's important to understand that there's an execution order here. The first thing that's done, and this we read left to right, however, code, when you assign a value, this value is computed, this, is, this line is executed before the result is assigned to the head variable, which means it's gonna build a new node and it's gonna put coffee and the original head in there. So just what I've highlighted, This is our initial state right here. We're gonna build a new node and the new node next is gonna be set to where head used to point. Now you might be worried, uh-oh, nothing's pointing to coffee. But this is the situation that will, uh, this is the result that will happen with just the code I have highlighted. So let's get rid of this. I'm just gonna comment it. And I'm not gonna do head equals. I'm just gonna do new node right here. And let's run this. 
what should happen, let's see. What should happen is the result should be exactly what you see right here. And it's a little bit weird that two things point to oatmeal. What we're going to do is use the two string method to print out. What do you think the two string method is going to print? Coffee is actually going to disappear because nothing is pointing to coffee. Coffee's pointing to something else, but nothing's pointing to coffee. So we'll run this. Now, just to warn you, size is going to get incremented. I'm not really printing out size, so I'm, at the moment I'm not using the size value. So the incorrect size won't mess us up for what we're doing here. All right, so I added coffee, but you can see coffee's not around. So how do we fix that? Well, it's going to build a new node. So again, this is the situation. And then what we want to do is set head equal to this new node. And then everything should be fine. And how do we do that? Well, here's the new node. You just go head equals this new node. And we accomplished all of this in a single line. I recommend you do it like this because it will make your code look a lot easier. Now, all we've done is index zero. I haven't talked about the other indexes. I think this video is long enough. Time for a break. We'll look at the index that's not the initial, not the zero index next.